one of the more frustrating parts of concentration practice is when you find that your mind doesn't stay where you tell it to. You could leave that as a lesson and not self and just let it keep happening, but that doesn't really accomplish anything. The important thing is not to get frustrated and to realize that you're going to be living with distraction for quite a while. And you want to make the most of it, because here's your opportunity to see the mind in action as it creates what are called states of becoming. As the Buddha said, it's the craving that leads to becoming is the cause of suffering. And so you want to look for the craving that goes into distraction. Because that right there is the craving that causes suffering. And the best way to watch it is, one, to create a really good state of becoming, which is what concentration is. It's something that you develop and bring into being. And use whatever stillness you can muster to notice what's going on as the mind slips away from this state of becoming to another. And the Buddha gives you tools or strategies for not going along with it, because that's the only way you're going to be able to see these processes is by not going into them. We tend to slip into a thought world. That's what's so disorienting about it. You're sitting here with a breath and suddenly you find yourself off in Albania. And you had no idea what were the steps in between. It's like someone took a big sack and put it over your head and carried you off and then dumped you out, and there you were. And what's actually happened is that the mind has been putting up screens around things. Often it actually plans its escape well before it happens, and then puts a screen up to pretend like it didn't do that. And so when you're determined not to go, you find that your determination is a little slow in, in the beginning, or you're slow in the draw and figure out what's happening. But as you maintain that determination, okay, the next time this is hap going to happen, I'm not going to go, you begin to see bit by bit by bit the steps by which the mind creates these states of becoming and then slips off into them. The tools the Buddha gives for helping you to get out of these states of becoming, once you've noticed you've gone in, or to step back from them when you see them happening. first one is just to replace the object of whatever that thought is with something better. This is why we work with the breath. It gives you something better to work with, better in the sense that it's more calm, it keeps you anchored in the present moment, and it gives you a sense of well-being right here. You learn how to breathe in ways that are comfortable, that feel right for the body right now. Because one of the main reasons we have that craving for becoming is our hunger for pleasure. Well, here's some pleasure right here. It's harmless, it saturates the body when you do it right, so you're more inclined to come back. And if you find yourself going off again repeatedly, then you've got to do a little bit more analytical work. Just remind yourself of the drawbacks of that kind of thinking. Because after all, it's because of our tendency to go running off into states of becoming that we not only have distraction while we're sitting here concentrated, it's why we were born here to begin with and how we're going to be born again. Buddhism is just the exact opposite of materialism. Materialism says the real things in the world are material processes, physical processes, and your consciousness is just kind of a what they call an epiphenomenon, something that happens on top of it, but it's not the real action. The real action is down there in your atoms. Well, the Buddhist perspective is just the other way around. The very first verse in the Dhammapada. The mind precedes all experiences, it precedes all the phenomena that you can take as objects. 
it's in charge. It's because of the quality of the mind that you're going to experience pleasure, pain, happiness, suffering. Things come out of here first. When you can't stay here, you find someplace else to go. There's going to be a very strong craving at that moment. Got to go someplace. And if you're desperate, you end up going kind of all sorts of places you don't want to go. You didn't look at the fine print, or you thought you had a ticket to someplace really nice, and then you find yourself off in Albania again. So you got to be careful. This ability of the mind to create states of becoming is something we many times like to play with, but we're like little children playing with fire or explosives and blow up in our hands. So you have to remind yourself, just wandering off, looking at the flowers, looking at the birds, may seem harmless, but it's not. It's creating ruts in the mind, especially at the point when you're facing death. The mind is going to be weakened by either the pain in the body or just by the fear of what's going to happen. An opening comes. and you run, run for it. And if you don't look carefully, you're going to find yourself someplace you wish you hadn't jumped into. Like, like that old story of hell. They have a hell where it's burning all the time. And every now and then a little door opens in one of the side walls, and people go running through the fire to get there, and then the door slams shut. Another door opens, and they go running out of that door, and then it slams shut. Finally, they get to a door that doesn't slam shut, but then they're in a hell of excrement. So you have to be careful. If you notice that your thinking goes in a particular direction that's imbued with lust or anger, remind yourself of the drawbacks of lust and anger. This is another way of pulling back from those distractions. If that doesn't work, you just ignore them. In other words, try to have a sense that whatever's going on in the mind, you're in a different part. It's like people chattering in one corner of a room and you're in another corner of the room, and you're going to stay here with a breath. And they can chatter as much as they like, but you're not going to get involved. Another strategy is when you notice that the creation of a thought world requires a little bit of attention someplace in the body as your marker that keeps your place there, keeps it going. But if you can find that pattern of attention, breathe through it. Relax that. And then finally, if none of these methods work, just determine you're not going to go any place else but right here. And as the Buddha says, press your tongue against the roof of your mouth. And in his words, crush your mind with your mind. In other words, just really put pressure on yourself that you're not going to go anywhere. This is the method of last resort, and it will work only as long as your willpower holds up. It's the method that uses the least discernment and the most force. But sometimes you find that it works. One variation on this is to just repeat your meditation word very fast in the mind, kind of to jam the circuits. You now the mind feels ready to settle down. It's had enough of that. It's ready to go back to the breath. So what you're doing here is trying to see the processes of becoming by refusing to go along with them. It's only by standing outside that you can see what they're doing. And you find as you keep this up, on the one hand, get the breath more and more comfortable, the sense of your space in the body getting bigger and bigger. You begin to see more easily kind of where in the body that little thought kernel develops, or that little tangle of potential thoughts. And you comb it out, comb out the tangle, zap the, the kernel. 
then you get quicker and quicker at this, and you see more precisely what are the stages. The mind creates these states of becoming. So there's, there are lessons to be learned from your distractions, not by following them, but by resisting them, but not getting frustrated over the fact that they're there. Each time you catch yourself, just learn how to drop these things unfinished. Step back from them and watch out for the next one. It's in this way that even though you don't want to get involved in the distractions, the fact that they're there is educational. There are lessons to be learned. And as long as you're not frustrated, you can absorb those lessons and get better and better, more and more skilled at avoiding these things, noticing when the first stages are happening, what little agreements go on in the minds. Okay, in just a few seconds, the next time you're a little bit more mindless, a little less alert, okay, then we're going to jump for it. And you see those agreements. And when they're exposed, it's like the agreements between criminals. When they're exposed, they deny it. And if you expose them even earlier, it won't happen. So be on the alert. This is one of the ways in which doing the concentration gives rise to discernment even before the concentration is good. You're getting insight into the ways the mind lies to itself. And that's a very valuable lesson to learn.